In this video, I'm going to show you how you can export a MoGrip file out of After Effects. Let's dive in. So I'm inside Adobe After Effects and I have this project opened up here where I have a social media lower third animated on screen. And I created this inside After Effects and I want to export it as a MoGert to use inside Adobe Premiere Pro. So to get started to export this out as a MoGert, the first thing I recommend is adding safe regions for your keyframes. If I click inside my timeline here and I click U to bring up all my keyframes, what we want to make sure is when we export out a motion graphic from After Effects, is that we preserve the animation of these keyframes for the in and out of the animations. So to do this, what you can do is navigate to your last keyframe. So I'm gonna to navigate to my last keyframe here, click N on your keyboard to trim your work area, and then right click and go to create protected region from work area. This will create a protected region of that work area. Now what you can do is go to the end. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my last keyframe here, click B, on your keyboard to trim the work area to start at this point. And then once again, you can right click and go to create protected region from work area. Now that you have those two work areas, we can reset our workspace. So I'm just gonna go to the beginning, click B to expand our work area again. And now we can start building out our motion graphic template. So to get started, you'll want to navigate to your essential graphics window. So you can go up to window essential graphics. This window should appear next to primary, select the composition that you'd like to create a motion graphic template from. In this case, this is the name of my composition here. Now you can name your Mogurt file. So I'm gonna name this the same name as my composition since that's the name I'd like to go with. And then one important note is that you wanna set the poster time. So if we go out forward, this is the preview or the thumbnail essentially of your Mogurt file that'll show up inside Premiere Pro. Once you have a good frame, you can click on set poster time and this will update in the top left there. Once you have that set, you can start adding properties into this window by clicking and dragging from the timeline window into the essential graphics window. So to get started, let's first add the social media icon. As you can see right here, I have the Instagram logo in my project. I want to add this in, that way the people that use this template can replace this image or graphic with other graphics such as other social media icons, maybe YouTube, Facebook, and this works not only for graphics, but also for images, videos, and other elements that you'd want to replace inside Premiere Pro. So for those type of assets, all you have to do is click and drag that layer directly into Essential Graphics. You'll notice that that image essentially will be added here. Now you can rename this, so you can rename this by double clicking to select the text and renaming it graphic or image. By default, it's gonna be the layer name. Under default scaling, you can choose how you'd like Premiere Pro to default the scaling of it. So it's gonna default to scale to fill. Usually I stick with scale to fill, but it's up to personal preference. The next thing we're gonna add is our text. So to add in text, you can navigate to your text layer. And where you have to go is underneath this layer. So we're gonna twirl down, clicking on the arrow here. And then under text, we can click and drag in the source text layer. And this will enable you to edit the text inside Premiere Pro. We can rename this text. And then if we click on this edit properties here, we can click on this and depending on our preferences, we can enable custom font selection and the other styling options. You can choose to enable this or disable this depending if you want the person using the Mogret file to be able to change the font, the size and the styles. In most cases, I check all of these and I click OK, and you'll notice that you see the options here. So people using the Mogert inside Premiere Pro can change the font, they can change the style, they can change the size, and so on and so forth. Now the next thing that we have to do, we added in the text, but you'll notice that it only adds in like the size, the font, the styles. We need to add in maybe the color, the position, or any other relating properties that you'd like to adjust inside Premiere Pro. So to get started, let's do position. So I'm gonna click on my layer and click P to bring up the position value. You can easily just click and drag the position property inside Essential Graphics and that'll add the position. I recommend changing the name of this, so I'm gonna just name this text position. And next, let's add in color. So color is a little tricky. By default, if you twirl down under the settings, there isn't really a good area for text color. So what I recommend doing is either adding an effect, such as a fill effect to your layer, or you can add a layer style. So for example, you can right click on your text layer, go to layer styles, and then go to color overlay. And if we scroll down under color overlay, we can change the default color 
to the color that we'd like, in this case black, and then we can click and drag this color value into our essential graphics panel, and we can rename this text color. So now that we added in our text properties, we can now add in our background box properties. So similar thing, what we're gonna do is go and navigate to our box background. We can scroll down, we can twirl down under contents, you can go into fill, then click and drag the box color in. We're gonna rename this box color. I'm also gonna add in the position of the box. So you'll notice when I click P on my keyboard, I animated the property of position. So when you've already animated a property, I don't recommend adding it in here. I don't believe you can because it is already animated. So it'll give you a warning. So what I recommend doing is either, if you're working with shape layers, you can go and twirl down into contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and then click and drag the position under here if it's not animated. Or if this is animated as well, what you can do is add an effect called transform. And this just adds a basic transform effect to your layer. So if we type in transform inside the effects and presets window, and we click and drag this transform effect to the box background, you'll see that it pops up inside effects controls. What we can do is twirl down under effects, under transform, and then from here, we have all of our properties. So this is a good way to re-add another transform modifier to your layer. That way you can click and drag this in and it doesn't disrupt your keyframes. And once again, you can rename this like box position. One last property I did want to add in here is the roundness. So I'm just going to click and drag in roundness for the round corners. Just keep in mind as you're building this, what values you'd want to add in. That way you can change it easily inside Premiere Pro. So adding the roundness, that way I can change the roundness later will be helpful. If I didn't add in that property, I wouldn't be able to change the roundness at all inside Premiere Pro. One last thing I did want to mention when building out your properties here is that you can organize them. You can add comments as well. You'll notice this add formatting dropdown. You can click add comment to add a comment field if you want to give instructions for a certain property. I'm not going to do that in this case. And you can also add a group. So for example, if you want to group all of the text options inside its own folder, what you can do is click add group and you can rename this text controls. And then you can click and drag the text properties directly inside this group. That way all the text controls are together. You can do the same with the box properties and other properties you may have added inside Essential Graphics. But once you have everything inside Essential Graphics, the last step to export this is to click Export Motion Graphics Template. If you haven't saved your project, it'll say to do that first. So I'm going to click Save and then this box will appear. You can choose where to save it. So you can click on Browse. You can choose a destination. I'm just going to save it inside my downloads folder for now. And then you can click OK. Depending on the fonts that you use inside your projects, it might warn you that the person operating it might not have the font because it's not synced with Adobe. So make sure if you're developing motion graphic templates that you add in the font or you add in a note to say to replace the font. But you can click OK. And once this is done, we have our finished motion graphic. If we go inside our finder window, we can see we have our Mogurt file. And we can easily import this inside Premiere Pro. Now, if you want to see how you import this inside Premiere Pro and work with them inside the software, I will leave a video where I go over that. I will leave that linked right up there. Feel free to go check that out. But that does it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.